Hey there everybody, so in this video I'll be analyzing Bethesda's New Year's tweet, which is the biggest mystery of all the clue drops thus far. If you haven't checked out the other videos about the Elder Scrolls 6 teaser trailer and the Starfield teaser easter egg yet, then you may want to check those out first, because these are designed to kind of build on each other. In those, we discussed how the clues seemed to point to Hammerfell as the setting of Elder Scrolls 6. A lot of different theories have been thrown around about this New Year's tweet, so here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to cover each light one at a time and throw out any thoughts that I think might be relevant. As you're watching, keep in mind that there may be more than one correct theory for each light. There's no reason to believe that these are mutually exclusive. Let's start with the bottommost light. It's located under the Hammerfell label, but it is also on the tip of the east prong of the compass. Some have suggested that this signifies Akavir, since that continent is east of Tamriel. I hesitate to go in that direction because I don't see a connection between Akavir and the other clues, at least not yet. However, I do think that we are meant to take note of it being on the east prong, rather than that it's in Hammerfell, because it's not centered under the Hammerfell label. If it were meant to point us to Hammerfell, then placing it directly on top of the east prong would be a strange choice. So the more likely explanation is that we are meant to take note of it being on the east prong. That could be a reference to many different things. Sadia fled east to Skyrim when the Alakir warriors started chasing her. The Rorkin clan migrated to Hammerfell from the east. Akavir is east of Tamriel. Since there are so many possibilities for this light, I think it would be wise to focus more on the other ones. Now let's talk about the light near Solitude. It's hard to pinpoint where exactly this one is meant to lead us, because the paper map differs from the in-game map ever so slightly. If we go to the tip of this island here, we find some horkers and some grass pods. This seems to be a dead end. I do want to point out that this view of Solitude is quite similar to this piece of concept art from ESO's Greymore expansion. I personally don't play ESO, so if anyone watching does, please look for clues in-game around this location and comment if you find anything. Moving on, the closest thing of note to here is the Kataraya, the ship that transports Emperor Titus Mead II during the Dark Brotherhood questline. It is also where the player assassinates him. The ship is likely named for Empress Kataraya Septim, who took the throne when her husband Pelagius III was removed due to his lunacy. Some have proposed that the transcribe the past part of the tweet pertains to a book about Solitude or Kataraya, but I don't think so. There's a book covering part of the map with the final light on top, so I think more than likely the transcribe the past bit pertains to that light and not this one. Back to this light, what about the Kataraya could Bethesda be trying to draw our attention to? Well, if we assume that we're on the right track with the Hammerfell clues, then there is an item of note hidden on the bowsprit, an Alakir scimitar called Windshear, which has a unique enchantment that can knock enemies down. Windshear only exists in Skyrim, and there is no lore for it. The term wind shear, as defined by the Federal Aviation Administration, is a change in wind speed and or direction over a short distance. It can occur either horizontally or vertically, and is most often associated with strong temperature inversions or density gradients. Wind shear can occur at high or low altitude. So why might Bethesda be trying to draw our gaze to this sword? For one thing, it's likely from Hammerfell, which fits with the other clues. There is another thing I'd like to note as well. Windshear is quite similar to Dragonbane, the unique sword found in Skyhaven Temple. They're both culture-specific swords with unique enchantments that appear nowhere in lore, and they're both named by combining two nouns. Many fans see Dragonbane as the Dragonborn's signature weapon because it's fitting for a sword with no known past to belong to a character with no known past. Also, it's found during the main questline and does extra damage to dragons, which aligns with the Dragonborn's destiny. So maybe Windshear will be the Elder Scrolls VI's equivalent of Dragonbane, as in it could be the weapon that we are meant to associate with the player character in ES6. Now for the last light on top of the book. This is where things get really weird, so bear with me here. I have come up with a bunch of theories for this one, and I'm guessing that some of them are right. But keep in mind that there could be more than one thing we're meant to take note of in these clues. 
Also keep in mind that we are looking for something to transcribe in association with this particular light because of the book it's sitting on. If we look where the light is on the map, there are two possible locations it could mark. Ingvild and Hela's Folly. Vekel, the man, sends the player to Ingvild to recover Arondil's journals. The rune also contains a copy of Reality and Other Falsehoods. However, I don't think this is the right path because nothing in Ingvild seems to connect to the other clues. That leaves us with Hela's Folly. This is the shipwreck where the Dark Brotherhood sends the player to kill Dekas. Little is known about the ship besides its involvement in that quest. Let's analyze the name a bit. After all, the tweet says to transcribe the past and map the future, so maybe the name of this location is relevant somehow. Let's start with a simple one. Ella's Folly has 10 letters with the first and third syllable beginning with H and F. You know what else in the Elder Scrolls universe fits that bill? Hammerfell, which fits with the other clues. Now let's focus more on the definition of Hela's Folly. Hela is the Norse goddess of the underworld. Folly has multiple meanings, and there are two definitions that Hela's Folly could be referring to. The first is a foolish act. For example, it was a folly of me to kill the Dark Brotherhood during my first Skyrim playthrough. The second is a kind of theatrical performance with elegant female performers. For example, the Zeigfeld Follies. The first definition's relevance is obvious, the ship is wrecked, which could be the result of a bad mistake. The second is more involved. Dekas has salvaged some peculiar items from the wreck, including a bunch of gemstones and a statue of Dibella. So what do we know about Dibella worshippers? Priestesses tend to live a secluded life similar to that of nuns. However, more practical followers of the goddess, such as Helga, see beauty as a means of empowerment and use it as such. That sounds like someone who might perform in a folly. So how is this relevant? Well, these are the sort of items one might expect for a folly feeder troop in the Elder Scrolls universe to have. So maybe this ship belonged to some kind of feeder troop that specialized in follies. I have more to say about the Dibella statue as well. Many have pointed out the coins sitting on top of the book, which are from ESO, and they symbolize the game's four expansions. So ESO seems to be part of this puzzle. While researching the Bella, I came across two books regarding the goddess that are only in ESO. Then it occurred to me, the coins are on top of the book, and the light is over Hela's Folly, which contains a Dibella statue. So maybe this is meant to lead us to these two books from ESO, Varieties of Faith, The Four Bears, and The Improved Emperor's Guide to Tamriel. And guess what? Both books allude to Dibella being a popular goddess among Red Guard women, which fits with the other clues. The teaser trailer and the Starfield easter egg both point to Hammerfell, and here's an interpretation of this light that fits with that. Again, I personally don't play ESO, so I cannot investigate these books or Hella's Folly in-game. Anyone watching that does play ESO, please search the area of Skyrim that's as close to Hella's Folly as you can get for anything that one might transcribe, and take a look at these books as well. I did explore a third path with the Dibella statue too. As already noted, Hela is the name of the Norse goddess of the Underworld, sort of like the Norse equivalent of R.K. So because of the presence of the statue, I asked, well, what would the Norse equivalent of Dibella be? And it would be a goddess named Freya. So I then searched my sources for a Norse myth that tells a story featuring Hela and Freya as main characters, thinking that maybe that's part of the transcribe bit, but I didn't find anything. If anyone watching is aware of a Norse myth that may be relevant here, please comment. Now let's see if we can ascertain how exactly the ship wrecked. The halves are still pretty close together, so this likely happened close to shore. There's a jagged rock right here that the crew likely wouldn't have been able to see from above water. This rock could have broken the hull as the crew was trying to drop anchor. Since I can't find another explanation, I'm going with that. Upon examining this rock, something does stand out. It points nearly perfectly west. Hammerfell and Tyrock are the provinces west of Skyrim, which fits with our other clues. Now let's talk about what might have happened to the crew. There are no bodies to be found, so maybe they're alive. If we are right about the ship wrecking close to shore, then this seems likely. Many have theorized that the quest In My Time of Need may be a precursor to Elder Scrolls VI. In that quest, we learn that Sadia has fled Hammerfell, but how exactly she escaped is left untold. So maybe she escaped on this ship. 
If the Folly Feeder Troop theory is correct, then maybe she posed as an actress to gain passage. I also want to throw out there that maybe it was Sadia who hired the Dark Brotherhood to kill Deacus, thinking that she needed to cover up a loose end that he might find. Sometime in the future, I will do a video about the Dark Brotherhood contracts and try to figure out who wanted each person dead, so look forward to that. Back on subject, what might have happened to the crew? I have a more disturbing theory. The only other location on this island is Ingvild, which as already noted is where Vekul sends the player for Arondil's journals. In these journals, it's revealed that Arondil is a sexual predator. In one of them, he writes that he ordered his servants to go capture more servants. So if the Folly Feeder Troop theory is correct, then maybe Arondil captured the crew and made them his servants. Now let's explore a completely different interpretation of the light over Hela's Folly than what we have discussed so far. A lot of people have pointed out that Hela's Folly is one of the locations where the book Ngasta Kavada Kavakis can spawn if Urag sends the player to get that book for the Radiant Quest Fetch Me That Book. This book made its first appearance in Morrowind and has since been featured in Oblivion and Skyrim. The contents of Ngasta Kavada Kavakis appear to be gibberish. All we have to go on regarding its origin is this passage here saying that this book was purportedly written by a character from the Elder Scrolls Adventures Redguard named Ingasta. The language is supposedly the language of the Slodes, which are slug-like beings known for practicing necromancy in the Elder Scrolls universe. Ingasta was a Slode who lived on a small island in the Stros Makai archipelago. Before I tell you what Ngasta Kavada Kavakis is, I want to briefly discuss a possible connection Ngasta could have to another theory we discussed. Earlier, I stated that Hela is the Norse equivalent of Arke, the god of death, so we may be meant to interpret the name Hela's Folly actually as Arke's Folly, which could mean that Arke made some sort of mistake. Then there's the book Ngasta Kavada Kavakis that can spawn in Dikas's chest at this location. The supposed author of this text was a necromancer. So maybe R.K. made a folly involving Ngasta's practice of necromancy, and somehow this will become a plot in Elder Scrolls VI. Now for the big reveal, what does this mysterious book say? Many years ago, a man named Paul managed to decode the contents of Ngasta Kavada Kavakis. I have linked to the Imperial Library's record of this in the description. As it turns out, Ngasta Kavada Kavakis is a passage taken from the internet about the newsletter for a club of Esperanto speakers called The Small Frogs, written in Esperanto and coded for use in-game. I kid you not, I am not pulling your tail, that is what this book is. For those who don't know, in 1887, Dr. L. L. Zamenhof invented a language called Esperanto to provide people with a means of communicating cross-culturally. This started the movement of people forming clubs to practice the language. The fad died down within a few years, but survived in small numbers for about a hundred years. Then the internet was invented, and a modernized version of it started up. The contents of Ngasta Kavada Kavakis came from a website called Bainhof, and the book's content is just just a passage providing information about the newsletter for an Esperanto club called the Small Frogs. Unfortunately, the exact webpage that it came from is no longer there, and I was unable to come up with any other records of the Small Frogs, so I don't know if they still exist. So let's just pause for a second and acknowledge that this is crazy, right? <laughs> I mean, during Morrowind's development, some Bethesda employee took a passage from a webpage about an Esperanto club's newsletter that was written in Esperanto, encoded it, and placed it in the game. Perhaps whatever employee did this was a member of the Small Frogs and literally wrote the book using their copy of the newsletter. There's also another book that appears in Oblivion called The Bible of the Deep Ones that contains a passage from Ngasta Kavada Kavakis, but it's written in Daedric. Given that Ngasta Kavada Kavakis can spawn at Hela's Folly, connects to the other Hammerfell clues since Ngasta is from Hammerfell, and literally must be transcribed to be understood, it seems more than likely that this is at least one of the things that we are meant to examine. Some might ask if this is indeed something we are meant to transcribe, then why this specific location where the book can spawn? Well, I've got a few explanations. 
many of the other places that have this book have other major things associated with them. Let's say they had put the light over the Bard's College. There's a lot of books in there, so how would we know which one we're meant to focus on? Another place it spawns is Skyborn Altar, and if they sent us there, then we might look at the word wall and think, oh, we're meant to transcribe this word wall. So it could be that sending us to Hell is Folly was just the best route to getting us on the right text. Also, it does create a nice aesthetic for the picture. If they had put it on a place like, let's say, Valfheim Towers, which is right in the middle of the map, then the picture would look awkward. Furthermore, maybe there's more to this light than just Ngasta Kavada Kavakas. Some of our other theories about Hella's Folly may be correct as well. Maybe Sadia did escape Hammerfell on this ship, or maybe this rock pointing west is a clue. Only time will tell. So, assuming that Ngasta Kavada Kavakas is part of this equation, then what the heck is this thing supposed to tell us? I mean, it's encoded Esperanto, taken from the internet for goodness sake. What could it possibly tell us about Elder Scrolls 6? Well, maybe it's not the text itself we're meant to take note of, but rather the language itself. Maybe Slodes are related to the plot of ES6. Ingasta was a character in Redguard, which took place on the island of Stroh's Mackay in Hammerfell. That could signal a return to the region. Also, it could be that Esperanto holds more answers. It's far-fetched, but I have been translating words that have come up in these videos into Esperanto to see if I end up with an acronym or something, but so far, no. Some might suggest that the specific copy of Angasta Kavada Kavakis that spawns at Hella's Folly might be important. I took the liberty of running some in-game tests to see if something magic happens, but I found nothing. I tried hitting the chest with wind shear. I tried putting it on the altars for the destruction ritual quest. I tried looking for a trend in the items that spawn with it. I tried bringing it aboard the Kataraya. I tried showing it to Sadia and Nazir. I tried taking it to every ship with a slowed figurehead, and more, and I found nothing. I'm not surprised by this though, because Bethesda seems to be trying to get us to think with these clue drops. It seems more like a mental game than some Ready Player One style mystery. With that in mind, there is actually something unique about this specific copy that I should bring up. It's stolen. Seems to be the only one that you can get that has this stolen tag, which could have meaning. Perhaps it symbolizes Hammerfell being stolen from Sadia, or taking this text from the Small Frogs. If you have any ideas, please comment. There is one more thing I'd like to discuss about Hella's Folly, and it relates back to the Kataraya. Both these locations are featured in the Dark Brotherhood questline, which could have significance. Perhaps Elder Scrolls VI will expand upon the mysteries regarding these locations and that questline. Maybe the story of this shipwreck does pertain to Hammerfell. The Sadia theory we discussed earlier could be true. Furthermore, the big arc of the Dark Brotherhood questline is Amand Motier's scheme to assassinate the Emperor, but we never find out exactly why Motier wants him dead. Then toward the end of the questline, Motier's face turns yellow and purple, as if he has some terrible disease, but we never get an explanation. Maybe Elder Scrolls VI will give us that explanation. I have one more thing to say involving every light. As we discussed earlier, the first is on the east prong of the compass. Something came to mind when I was looking at the rock pointing west. It's kind of like a compass, isn't it? Maybe this represents the west prong in some way. So I then revisited the light near Solitude, looking for something that could be meant to resemble a north or south prong on a compass, and I did find that this rock here somewhat points north. Maybe the last piece of the puzzle is that we're supposed to find the south prong somewhere. I have no idea where to look, but the other two rocks are very close to locations involved in the Dark Brotherhood questline. Hella's Folly is where Dekus is killed, and the Kataraya is where the Emperor is killed. I also should note that Astrid originally instructs the player to kill the Emperor with Jaren Root, which ends up being a setup. If asked for further information, Astrid will tell the player that Jaren Root grows only on the island of Stroh's Mackay, which ties in with the Angasta clues. So I've been looking at other areas featured in that questline, but so far I haven't found an obvious south prong. Maybe there isn't one. I also figured that the compass in Castle Volkahar's courtyard could be relevant to this compass thing as well, but I haven't found any promising leads there either. 
To conclude, with all the clues together, I think that the most logical conclusion is that Elder Scrolls 6 will take place in the Iliac Bay area, like Daggerfall did. I'm very confident in what I presented about the Elder Scrolls 6 teaser and the Starfield teaser easter egg. The theory is about the tweet I am less sure of. I think that some of them are probably right, but not all of them. Regardless of how many are true, most of them do point to Hammerfell, which reinforces the analysis of the teasers. However, one question remains. Most of the clues point to Hammerfell, but only a few point to High Rock. Why? One possibility is that there are clues for High Rock that we simply have not found. Another possibility is that Elder Scrolls VI will not feature High Rock, which I find unlikely because since it's been over a decade since Skyrim, there is pressure to make this game big, and just Hammerfell is not enough. Also, Bethesda could release the game in waves and not include High Rock in the initial release, like what Free for Free is doing with Halo Infinite. Or a third possibility is that Bethesda just wants to be concise with these clues, and hinting multiple provinces in the same clue drops would be too confusing. Thank you for watching, please hit that like button, subscribe, check out my other content, every bit helps me. I hope we get more clue drops in the future, and I'll be here to cover them.